Today's theme is God gave the song. When I knew the day would be a heavy music day, and we're doing great on time, we have a lot more to do today because we have the dedication of Rigsby and Hunter's children today at the end of the service. And if Jonathan will scream encore at the very end, we'll, we have an encore song, Jonathan, just to let you know. Uh, we've already got him programmed. <laughs> You need your Bible and turn to Psalm 150. Dalton, if you come on up, please. Today, Jackie's so happy because I have one slide until we get to the prayer. So you can just relax and enjoy church, Jackie. You weren't <laughs> God gave Hunter a song in her heart, just like all of us. And so happy to have your family and friends with you. They were not able to be here on Mother's Day when we had child dedication. So we worked out this day. I'm so happy that Jerry and Charles could be here. And all the extended family and even Grandpa Dan. They call him Papa Dan. Is that your granddaddy word? Sure, we'll go with it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> he don't want to be granddaddy yet. Papa Dan is good. But as I was preparing this message on Sunday night, last week, Some churches go on and on and have 45 minutes or an hour for the music. But I try to let you get out of here no later than 12 o'clock. And uh, I know today is a funeral for Sherry, and so we honor and, and respect all that. But look at Psalm 50. Glad that uh, Dalton is home part of the summer anyway, and, uh, and from school, and he knows the Lord Jesus, and he's going to read this scripture for us Psalm 150. So God created great sea creatures and 
every living thing that moves, with which the waters abounded according to their kind, every winged bird according to its kind, and God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the waters and the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Do you ever just go outside and listen to the birds? You need to. I need to, Lord. I need to be in the car without the radio on sometimes. Put the windows down and listen to nature. Uh, I love our screen porch uh, the, at the Parsonage. It's just, just a beautiful place in the morning to be there. And of course, I'm not up at 4 o'clock in the morning the way some of these guys are. But uh, about 6 or 7-ish, I try to roll out and, uh, and enjoy being on the side porch there. But listening to creation... To the birds. Now, some of you know what all the birds sound like. You can you can uh, identify their song. But you know the ocean also has a song with its rhythm. When we were down at Myrtle Beach for uh, Dallas and Bennett's wedding, it was just so nice. We were uh, the hotel was right on the beach, had a view of the beach. I could go out on a little porch and just listen to the sound of God's creation. Nature praises the Lord. Do you know that stars produce sounds? Now, I'm not a scientist. I taught earth science one year. That was exciting. I had to get the teacher's guide and get the blanks all filled in in the teacher's book because I had never taught earth science before. So that was a whole new experience for me uh, back somewhere in the late 80s. But uh, we learned that stars produce a infrasound acoustic waves. The sounds are so low, we cannot hear them with our human ear. But the telescopes pick up those sounds. You can go to YouTube and, and Google, just Google or YouTube the sounds of the stars. Scientists have reproduced these sounds into pitches of music. The large stars produce low tones, such as a tuba or a double bass. The small stars have high-pitched tones similar to a flute. Now I want you to turn back to Psalm 147. Just a few pages back. These are some beautiful, beautiful psalms here. And I would encourage you, when you don't know what to read in your Bible, either go to Psalms or Proverbs. There's always something there for you. Psalm 147. Praise the Lord. It is good to sing praises to our God. What we've done today is good. For it is pleasant and praise is beautiful. This church has a 104 year old history of music. Daddy's mom took care of the, the choir and the singing and the organ uh, years ago. And uh, it's Miss Margie and I didn't get to meet her but I have her on the DVD. I have seen some of the movies of her work. And then the, you have just kept that tradition going here. Music is so important. He said it's pleasant and praise is beautiful. Look at verse 2. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers together the outcasts. He heals the brokenhearted and binds their wounds. He counts the number of the stars and he calls them all by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding is infinite. Amen. So he, he gave us the stars. He gave us the song. And my message today is God gave us the song. Look in verse 7. Sing to the Lord. I challenge you to circle these words. How many times do you see the word sing or song or voice? Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praises to, on the heart. To our God, who covers the heaven with clouds, who prepares rain for the earth, who makes grass to grow on the mountains. And I look, look at verse 11. The Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him and who's, who hope in his mercy. Today we have a testimony of Cherie's survival. We have a testimony of Hunter's survival. We're praying for Courtney. We're praying for Eddie. People that are facing health challenges. Folks, life is brief. Life is a gift. It's 6.30 Thursday morning. Jamie called me and said, I think you better know 
that Miss Sherry Wells has passed. And I said, oh, you mean Sherry? He said, no, Sherry, Becky's youngest daughter, 56 years old. She taught school all day Friday. Excuse me, on, excuse me, on Wednesday. She taught school, dropped little Jared off with his mama, and she went home and uh, it collapsed while her husband was cooking on the grill outside. Life, you think, you think, oh, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm here for a long time. You have no promise of tomorrow. The Bible says, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Every day is a gift. Every breath that God gives us. Psalm 28, 7, again, David said, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him. My heart rejoices with my song. I will praise him. David also said in Psalm 40, Many will see your song. He didn't say they will hear it. He said they will see your song. How does somebody see your song? By your attitude. By your actions. By your countenance. By your spirit. People will go, there's something about that person. They are trusting in the Lord. You know in Zephaniah, you might want to write this down somewhere. The only time in the scripture, but in Zephaniah 3.17, it says God sings. The Bible says, He will rejoice over you with singing. And Psalm 40 says, He has put a new song in my mouth. Many will see it. He is the author of our music. He's the reason we have a song. As I said earlier, there's over 500 references to music in the scripture. Dalton read Psalm 150. But let's look back at Psalm 146. Just want you to skip with me. These last few psalms are psalms of praise. And by the way, they were written by a sinner. They were written by David. David was a good king. Sometimes he was a bad man. God was a forgiven man. And, excuse me, David was a forgiven man by God. And David said, Lord, use me again. I want you visitors to know that we have extra copies of this book, Purpose Driven Life. Uh, they were donated to us. There's some on the table. There's some in the lobby. If you didn't get one or if anybody is here today and didn't get one, they were donated. Please take them. They're written by a man. He's not perfect, but he used biblical principles in his book. And we read God's book with biblical principles here. We have the praising. It begins in Psalm 146. Look at verse 1 of Psalm 146. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Yesterday, I assisted at the funeral of Mrs. Taylor, who would have turned 101 years old on June the 9th. 101. Marguerite, you've got to catch up. You've got a few more years till you get to 101. And she had a test. How many, how many of you knew Mrs. Taylor? She was real faithful in Zion. And she's been in a nursing home in Richmond for a while. But her testimony was that she was faithful to God and she praised the Lord and she taught others to praise the Lord. So it's in the scripture of Psalm 146. Look at verse uh, 3. Do not put your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. His spirit departs, he returns to the earth, and that day his plans perish. Happy is the man who has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. So there, that psalm tells us to praise. Look at 147. Praise the Lord. It is good to sing praises. Then look at 148. This whole last package of psalms of David is all about creation. Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens and the heights, all his angels. All his hosts, praise him, sun and moon, the stars of light, you heavens of heavens, the waters above the heavens. Then look at 
149. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. Now today we sang some old songs, but others sang a new song. Probably a song many of you have never heard. It isn't new or old. It's, is there a message? Does the message bless hearts? Does it exalt Christ? He said, sing a new song and his praise in the assembly. Look at verse 3. Let them praise his name with the dance. Sing praises to him, the tem temporal and heart. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the humble with salvation. And are you joyful? Look at verse 5. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds. Now, I don't believe this is talking about in heaven. I believe it's in the glory of God. Even to the time when you're down on your bed and you're sick, you can still praise God with your life. And then we read Psalm 150. But I want to challenge you. Music is a part of most of our lives. Now I think the devil has done something to our cars. Because new cars don't have CD players. I think that's of the devil. Because I have quite a collection of CD, uh, CDs. And I refuse to stop. Okay, I drive an 02 or 03 Buick, and uh, the 02 has a CD player. And our Ford, our 05, has a CD player. I wouldn't buy a car without a CD player. I don't think it's the will of the Lord. <laughs> I grew up in a musical home. My dad played the guitar. He only knew two songs, Five Foot Two, Eyes of Blue, and Little Brown Joe. But he played it real well, and, 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 he, uh, and, and he taught me how to play chopsticks on the piano. I didn't really realize he was a gifted musician, but he really could sing. And I, I thank God that he taught me a little bit and, and taught me to love music. But we grew up in a musical home. But today I'm going to do a little test with you. Some of the music we listen to, I was born 55, it was a great year for Chevy, Sports, and, and babies. Amen. <laughs> My wife and I both are 55 models. And, uh, so the music we listened to through the 60s and 70s had a great influence on our life. Now, I'm going to give you a test today. I'm going to play some introductions to, and Alan, I chose just to do it up here so I wouldn't have to mess up the recording. If you know this song, raise your hand. Now don't cheat. Come on, read it. All right, we'll start it again. I'm not going to let you hear the words yet. Anybody know it? Craig. It's knowing that your door is always open. Ah, you knew that. That introduction, now, Glenn Campbell would do a lot of uh, special songs and introductions. But this past week, I was listening to Glenn Campbell's greatest hits. And it amazed me, the style of music. And that, he, was, um, he was an amazing talent. And, and Glenn Campbell found the Lord. God yeah. found him yes, before it was over with. Hallelujah. He, he became sick with uh, Alzheimer's. But just listen to some of these introductions. I have fun with them. Hold on. This creates a lot of lovers world. That keeps you in the back roads by the rivers of my memory. It keeps you in the rivers of my mind. Now, I found out today that Russ Gordon can sing that whole song. <laughs> <laughs> if you've ever heard the words, if you've read the lyrics to this song, it's really a sad song. It sounds happy. Terry, I bet you could have sung. It's the story of a troubadour, a man who couldn't settle down. He said, uh, I think your door is always open and uh, I might keep a sleeping bag behind the couch. What? <laughs> no, it, it didn't have overtones of anything immoral. It just, the, the theme was a man who just couldn't settle down. Even Started drinking out of uh, old tin cups and by the railroad. Now I've got you curious. Now don't be starting to Google Glenn Campbell right now. <laughs> but I'm, 
we're, I'm making a point here. Listen to some more introductions from Glenn. Recognize it? Come on, admit it. What is it? Have some of y'all crying. Recognize this one? She looks in the mirror and stares at the ripples that weren't there yesterday. Well, that wasn't very nice. <laughs> that was <wasn't> fine. <laughs> but the point I'm trying to make is most of his songs were very sad. There were songs of loss. I'm not condemning you if you've had more than one marriage, but Glenn Campbell had four marriages and finally got his head on tight with the fourth one. And he, she was faithful to him and took care of him until he passed. But his lifestyle, the lifestyle of a country singer, is surely not encouraging to be wholesome and pure and clean. Just listen to a couple more. Oh, do you know this one? What is it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs>
godly, wholesome things. One day, one Sunday, Layla went upstairs and, and just gave a testimony to our young people. How much everything they listen to, their playlist, affects their life. And I, when I was a youth pastor in the 70s, I was ranting and raving on Creedence Clearwater Revival and Jimi Hendrix and fussing about all them wicked people and telling those kids they were going to, not, not they were going to hell, they, they act like they were, uh, listening to that kind of stuff. Our praises, our entire life, our atmosphere. If you ever come to our house and we're not home, the music's still playing. We used to play it for Teddy, our little dog. He's not with us anymore, but I keep music playing. And sometimes uh, uh, people have to come in and do some work at our house, and most of the time I keep music playing. Do you notice music's playing outside the window every time? In fact, the neighbors across the street really appreciate that at 3 in the morning. <laughs> it plays 24-7. I don't know how to program it. Every good thing that God has given us can be perverted by the devil. There is a devil named Satan, and he hates harmony, and dis he loves discord. Today when we sang the, the trio, we've sung together a few times, and we all have an ear for music, and whenever Cherie's not singing, I can pop in on the tenor or the baritone. That's what makes harmony. Discord will destroy your life. Real music has tension and release. If I went to the piano, this is how you drive a musician crazy.
They shall not be ashamed, but shall speak with the enemies of the gate. And would you read verse 3 one more time? Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Thank you. The parents of Jesus took him to the temple to dedicate him. In Luke 2, he came by the Spirit to the temple, and when the parents brought in the child to do for him according to the custom, Simeon took him in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of the people. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken. And Jesus increased in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and man. Kristen, will you get just as I am? Uh, Samantha wants to wait a week on that one. I mean, we didn't have a lesson this week, so she wanted to wait. We're going to have an invitation now. And I'm going to ask the Wickham family to come forward. But also, I want to invite you to come forward. Some of you need to say... Some of you do not know if you walked out of this church today that you would go to heaven. Sherry Wells didn't know, but she left work Wednesday that she would be in glory in eternity that afternoon. You said, well, you trying to scare us? I sure wish I could. Because we need to be respectful of sin and of salvation and aware of heaven and hell. There is a heaven, and there is a hell. There is a God, and there is a devil. And God gives us the choice to follow Him. Today's invitation is for someone who says, I just need to settle my salvation today. Some of you may want to join our church. Some of you have talked to me about it in the past. Today, the door is open. If you'd like to come forward and present yourself for membership. Could we stand together, please? Miss Debbie's going to leave us in just as I am.